Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Fire Lizard's Talons. Now the Fire Lizard's Talons is definitely a really odd one. Um, I really don't uh, know exactly what to tell you guys about this one, uh, which is why we're going to go over it together and we're going to talk about it. And maybe um, after I spew my guts into the camera, I'll have uh, an answer for you. So the Fire Lizard's Talons is an elite level item. It is a Feral Claws. Um, it is a relatively high level item, as you can see at level 67, which does make this more toward an end game piece of equipment. Um, it is 113 dex, 113 strength requirement. Uh, most claws tend to be pretty high in both requirements, but not so high that it's ridiculous. Uh, we also have 67 level requirement, and, uh, and then on top of that, it's a very fast attack speed item because it also has 15% increased attack speed. Uh, it's nice to have a little bit of increased attack speed. Uh, we also have plus three martial arts, uh, which is kind of the confusing bit on this, um, and it does vary between one to three. So right off the bat here, we already have a variable, a kind of a weird one. Uh, martial arts has never been so amazing that I was like, oh my god, plus three martial arts is so amazing, like I can't live without it. Um, to the point where I felt like I needed to make a claw that rolled between one to three martial arts instead of plus three, and then make that claw an endgame claw, and then, I, I, I don't know, it's... it's bleh. And then uh, on top of that we have 270% um, enhanced damage, which does vary by 70%, which is a little bit more than most items. I've, I've reviewed just about every single item in this game, and I'm telling you, most items tend to have a variable of about 50% or less, so having a variable of 70% seems like a little bit of a slap in the face to this item. Um, we also have a huge amount of fire damage of 236 to 480, which is actually a lot of fire damage. Um, and if you were a uh, fire damage character, maybe you were running things like Flickering Flame, or you had negative fire res on a shield, or, or maybe a J-Mod armor with fire facets in it or something, um, I could see the fire damage actually being useful. But of course, fire damage, as we all know, is one of the most immune things, or, or, or most common immunities in Diablo 2 Resurrected. Um, as you play through, it's just tons and tons and tons of fire immunes, and you need another element usually to go along with fire. Is fire good to use? Yes, it is. And for those monsters that you find that are not immune to fire, it actually works very, very well. But there's just so many fire immunes. Um, we also have a plus two to Wake of Inferno, which um, until 2.4 was a joke. Uh, Wake of Inferno It was probably one of the worst skills I think the Assassin had ever had. And, uh, and quite honestly, um, the fact that they made it a variable of plus one to plus two is actually kind of insulting. <laughs> it's like, here's this skill that's garbage, and <laughs> we're not even going to give you max skills on it most of the time. <laughs> uh, and then on top of that, they also had Wake of Fire. So plus one to plus two, it varies as well. Um, Wake of Fire is another one. Wake of Fire is actually kind of good at low levels, and uh, and if you play a low-level assassin, you will know what I'm talking about, because low-level trap assassins can actually own pretty well with Wake of Fire. Uh, I actually loved using Wake of Fire on my low-level assassin. Um, it also has a pretty massive 70% fire resistance on here, which is kind of meh. Um, I'm always kind of torn when I see a singular massive resistance, and it's not like more than what a shield would give. So, like, if you think about it logically, um, let's say I were to utilize a sanctuary or a spirit or, um, you know, any other number of items that have all resistances on them, even a rhyme shield, um, you know, the, the amount of all resistances that you get from those shields is pretty massive. And um, they made the fire resistance roll between 40 to 70%. Now, 70 is more on the side where it actually kind of makes sense because, you know, if you're giving up all resistances, you would expect that the resistance you get would be more than the all resistances that you would normally give up. Um, let's take something like the Jade Talon. So the Jade Talon has 50 all resistances, right? So 50 all resistances versus 70 to a single doesn't really seem like a good comparison, especially when you consider the fact that, well, 50 all resistances is way better. The only situation that I can see maybe where this might be interesting is if you utilize this with a spirit shield, which is missing fire resistance, um, it would completely, you know, cover up that missing fire resistance. 
Um, the other issues here are that the fire lizard's talents seem to be at cross purposes, um, and uh, and let's let's talk about that, shall we? So we have here a claw which has pretty decent damage, um, but it also has martial arts skills and trap skills combined, which is usually not something that you do. Um, with the exception of Death Sentry, because it has Corpse Explosion, um, you don't generally mix purposes like this. Like, you don't generally build a, a trap assassin that runs in attacking with his claw, and you don't generally build a martial arts assassin that utilizes traps, and it, and it really has to do with the synergy um, constraints. So, like, for instance, if I was going to build a uh, trap assassin, um, I would have to build, for instance, if I was doing fire, I would have to build Fire Blast, so 20 points into Fire Blast. I would have to build Wake of Fire, which is 20 points into Wake of Fire, so that's 40. And then I would have to put 20 more points into Wake of Inferno, which is 60 points. 60 points is a lot of skill points to invest into a tree, okay? Um, at which point, then I'm also a martial arts sin, so what am I doing over here that I can do with sub 60 points so I've, I, I no longer have 60 of my skill points so that I can beef up my fire traps to their maximum right so what point do I look at this and go okay well I got a hundred and like 10 points that I can spend right and 60 of those have just been eaten by the fire tree so I've got 50 skill points left I'm going to want things like Claw Mastery, uh, Weapon Block, one of these, Burst of Speed or Fade. I'm going to want probably one point into Venom, at which point I probably only have like 30 points left to spend in the Martial Arts Tree, and it just doesn't make a lot of sense to have a Trap slash Martial Artist that's utilizing the Fire Tree, which requires a pretty hefty investment to do so. Um, on top of that, even if I were to say like, Let's say I just wanted to be like a fire assassin, right? So I build Fist of Fire. Um, I build, you know, I build Fist of Fire. I build like a Dragon Tail, which is a fire damage ability. Um, I build the fire traps. And everything that I have is fire, right? So I'm building fire, fire, fire. More fire and more fire. I even build Phoenix Strike to go along with it because it beefs up Fist of Fire. And Fist of Fire beefs up Phoenix Strike uh, for the fire effects only, by the way. So I have tons and tons of fire damage, right? And I build negative fire resistance, and I get maybe like, um, I don't know, like uh, my other claw, I could do like a plague claw for lower resistance, or I could do an infinity on a merc or something like that. None of the negative fire resistance that I would have as a fire martial arts assassin to beef up my fire damage would affect my fire traps. Uh, traps are minions, and they don't really get affected by negative fire resistance. Um, they do get affected by infinity, the conviction aura and they do get affected by lower resistance but i would be not taking advantage of the massive amount of negative enemy fire resistance that i would have on equipment to make like a fire assassin like a melee assassin actually work which is kind of sad in other words it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to have a claw that does melee and traps at the same time it's it's weird um, I feel like they would have been better off taking this plus to skills, the Wake of Inferno and the Wake of Fire, take that off of there, um, and instead put on plus two Fist and plus two Phoenix. Um, that would actually make it useful, and, and I think I might actually utilize that on like a, um, a fire-based um, martial arts set, because at that point... I'm looking at plus three to Marshall and plus two to Phoenix and plus two to Fist. So I got plus five to the fire skills on this particular character. And I could potentially use two of them, which would give me plus uh, 10 to, you know, my Fist and plus 10 to my Phoenix Strike. Um, and, and it could be a very interesting item um, in that regard. But because it has the traps instead of the fire martial arts skills, it just seems cross-purposed and it doesn't really seem like it has a whole lot of use um i do feel like that fire damage could probably come in handy for kicks um just simply because it's going to apply on every single kick and some of the kicks do pretty nice damage um, the ethereal version also we have here which i forgot to talk about is the 122 damage to 292 claw 
103 dex, 103 strength, 67 level requirement. Um, and as you can see here, the damage goes up pretty significantly with the ethereal version, but you would have to Zod this if you wanted to actually utilize it, um, you know, for a martial arts assassin. Um, I do believe you could uh, still get good use out of this on the kicks in, because I think some of the kicks don't burn durability. But um, if you actually wanted to swing it and slash at people with it, it's going to be a different story. Um, another issue with the Fire Lizard's talons is its stiff opposition. I mean, you've got a lot of different claws that you could potentially use, including the, the Natalia's um, uh, claw from the Nats set, uh, which is also very good. And, um, and there's just a lot of competition. You've got a very nice Jade Talon Sword here, which gives two and two. Uh, you've got a very nice Bartux here, which gives two and one, which is plus three. So it also gives plus three to the uh, Martial Arch Tree. And um, honestly, gives a lot better effects than the Fire Lizard's Talent. Um, I'm not really sure what to make about the Fire Lizard's Talent. I feel like if it got a little bit of a tweaks, if the Wake of Inferno and Wake of Fire got changed to the martial arts skills, or even vice versa, if the plus three martial arts got changed to plus three traps, this could find itself uh, some usefulness in either the trap tree or the martial arts tree. But the issue is, is that because it's kind of trying to be both things at the same time, I don't really know if it really has much use uh, past some niche builds, and uh, and even then, I, good luck finding it in good shape because it can roll plus one Marshall, plus one Wake, and plus one uh, Wake of Inferno, Wake of Fire. It it can roll really terribly. the The enhanced damage can go all the way as low as two hundred percent. The um, Marshall skills can roll as low as one. The Wake of Inferno can roll as low as one. The Wake of Fire can roll as low as one, and the Fire Resistance can roll as low as forty percent. Um, I see this a lot in a lot of the higher level uniques where they decided to give these uniques kind of halfway decent effects, but then smack you in the face and go, yeah, but you can't have them because good luck actually finding that in its perfect form. Um, let's check on uh, Silo's Pen real quick and see where we could potentially find this item if we wanted to hunt for it um, and, uh, you know, get an idea of what kind of monsters we want to kill to try and get our hands on a fired lizard's talent. Uh, maybe you have some niche build in mind and you want to take a look. Uh, we're going to assume 400% magic find on this because, quite honestly, it's a high-level item, and I just don't really see any reason to do anything less. Um, so here we go. Uh, not a super long list here, as you can see, and it does look like Bale in Hell is your best bet at 1 in 973, with Diablo in Hell at 1 in 1,030. 113. Now, Diablo in Hell is definitely the easier monster to farm repeatedly over Bale, because Bale has the waves, and you have to go through all the waves to get to him. So, in the same time it would take you to kill Bale, you could probably kill two or three Diablos. Um, let's take a look at Super Uniques. And uh, it does look like Neelothak has a pretty good chance at 1 in 7,404. Um, and the chances get pretty stiff uh, as you go up. I mean, Doc Farron has a decent chance at 1 in 11,226. Pindle at 1 in 11,435. Um, not really that great. I mean, even Lord De Cease, Infector of Souls, and Grand Visor of Chaos can drop it, but at 1 in 12,599 chance. So not like super duper great. It does look like Hell Diablo is probably your best bet, though. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, uh, even when we're talking about a very odd set of Feral Claws like the Fire Lizard's Talons. Um, I would like to hear what you guys have to think about this one. It's one that I don't quite grasp fully. And what I mean by that is that, like, if there's a specific purpose, I can't quite visualize it in my mind. Um, and, uh, and I also feel like most of the time when this drops, it's just not in good enough condition that people actually want to use it. Um, anyway, don't burn your hands on the claws, and as always, keep watching.